Turning in our Bibles this morning, please, to the Word of God, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Matthew's Gospel, please. And we're in chapter 26 this morning. Verse 36. Matthew 26, verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as, my, as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup may pass from me, away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. And then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise. Let us be going, behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great, a great multitude with swords and staves, and the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him away. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. And then said Jesus unto him, Put up thy sword into its place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father and he shall pre presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then... But how then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out against the thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the Scriptures might of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away, to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Self-confidence. Self-confidence now. Self-confidence is a staircase that never leads upwards to a spiritual crown. Self-confidence. No, self-confidence isn't a staircase this morning that leads us up to a spiritual crown. It's a staircase that leads us down to a spiritual collapse. Self-confidence leads to spiritual calamity. When a Christian is so self-sure of themselves, so self-sure of themselves, that is, they place themselves in a spiral, a spiral that leads downwards to the place of defeat. I and oftentimes disgrace. Self-confident and self-sure. 
You see, the Lord Jesus, when he was on earth, said, Without me, you can do nothing. No matter how well you can do it, no matter how gifted you are, without me, you can do nothing. And yet the Apostle Paul, on the other hand, could say, But I can do all things. That was Paul's confidence. But here was the condition. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You see, child of God, the book of Proverbs is right when it said in Proverbs 28 and 26, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And yet many people would tell me today, Ah, oh, but George, I know my own heart. I understand my own heart. Ah, oh, but what well, don't you know? You don't know your own heart, nor I don't know my own heart, because the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'll tell you something now, child of God. You don't know your own heart, nor I don't know my own heart. And sadly, we listen to our own heart more so than we listen to anybody else. You see, child of God, you and I this morning as Christians... We suffer this morning from a deadly weakness. It's in all of us. It's in me as much as you. It's what I call a strong weakness. A strong weakness. And I'll tell you, child of God, the strength of that weakness is, is mighty. And that strong weakness this morning is known as the flesh. That weakness is in me as much as it's in you. If you're struggling against the flesh, glory to God, that doesn't leave me in my boat my own. I struggle with the flesh. And the flesh this morning is a strong weakness that we wrestle with daily. How often we hear the words of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. You see... One of the great fruits of the flesh is old pride. Boys, we like to think we are somebody. We like to think we're different from everybody else, and we like to think we're better than everybody else. But yet the book of Proverbs says, Pride goeth before destruction. And how often, child of God, we allow pride to blossom from the roots of the flesh. Well, where did we end our scripture reading this morning but Peter? Followed afar off. You see this morning about Peter. Peter followed afar off. And where we left Peter in our scripture reading this morning, he's falling like a wingless bird. He's dropping like a stone. He's following afar off this morning. Do you see this backsliding business? This backsliding business. Where does it begin? Where did it begin with Peter here? Because we're concentrating on Peter this morning. Where did it begin with him? Where did it all begin with Peter? Well, I'll tell you where it began with Peter. When Peter thought he was different from everybody else. When Peter thought he was better than everybody else, do you remember what Peter said to the Lord Jesus? He says, though all men, all men forsake you, I will never forsake you. And though all men forsake you, I will never forsake you. And Lord, Lord, let the, they, they can do whatever they want to do, Lord. They can do whatever they want to do. But Lord, as far as I'm concerned, I'm prepared to go to prison with you. Boys, he wasn't self-confident then, or he? He was overflowing with confidence. Ah, but it was the flesh. It was the flesh. And even though this morning, even, even though this morning, child of God, Peter followed afar off, he's a warning to us all. Because do you see this backsliding business that I'm referring to? 
It doesn't happen suddenly. This backsliding business is not an accident of a moment. It's not an accident of a moment. Backsliding is an outcome of a gradual process. You see, Peter this morning, he thinks he's different. You know, the Lord Je Peter said, verse 33, Peter answered and said, Lord, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. The Lord Jesus in verse 34 said, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. But Peter wasn't satisfied with that. Peter said, Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. And likewise all say the, the disciples. Uh, the Lord Jesus says, Peter, now before the cock crows, he says, before the cock crows, you'll the name. Not a bit of it. You see, Peter, Peter thought the Lord was mistaken. When the Lord spoke to Peter, he thought Peter, the Lord was mistaken. But you remember the story, don't you? It was the cockerel that had the last crow. How do we overcome this problem with the flesh this morning? How do we overcome this, this strong weakness that's in all of us? Well, my text this morning is the key to how to overcome. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26 and verse 41 is my text this morning. The Lord Jesus says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I want you to notice, first of all, the command that is expressed. He says, watch and pray. He doesn't say, listen and pray. He says, watch and pray. See, here's one thing, child of God, I need to learn and you need to learn. The whole lot of us needs to learn. Not one of us in this meeting this morning has total control over our thoughts. Not one of us has total control over our hearts. Not one of us this morning has total control over our passions. Not one of us. And so many of us have the false notion that we have, well, we don't have. None of us have total control over our thoughts, and you know that as well as I know it. Thoughts come in that shouldn't come in. And none of us has total control over our hearts either. And none of us has total control over our passions. Because the flesh this morning is a strong weakness in all of us. And do you want to know something, child of God? It's that Weakness the devil homes in on. The devil homes in on that weakness. You see, child of God, this morning, it's our weakness that the flesh, or that the devil, seeks to pull us down on. You watch them nature programs. You watch the lion. The lion, she goes out, and I'm saying she, because you ever notice always the female lion that does the hunting? She does the hard work, and he's laying in the sun, snoring away, waiting for her to bring the, the food to him. Do you ever notice that? It's a bit like our house. Tracy prepares all the meals in our house. But she goes out, and you watch it. She homes in on the weakest of the herd. On the weakest. Why? Because the weakest makes the easiest prey. The weakest is the easiest to overcome. The, equi the, the weakest is the easiest to bring down. And you see, child of God, the weakness in your life and the weakness in my life is where the devil always seeks to bring us down. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil goeth about like a roaring land, seeking whom he may desire. And you know the Lord Jesus says, Watch and pray. You see, the, the lion, she doesn't go roaring after its prey. No, she comes sneaking up on the prey. And you know, child of God, we need to be watching in these days. 
We need to be watching. Every one of us suffer from this strong weakness. I can tell you, we all have this weakness this morning. It's called the flesh, and the devil seeks to overcome us through our weakness this morning. You remember, David, in 2 Samuel chapter 11? You remember Achan and Joshua 7? How they fell. And as I have often heard the expression, you've heard it, they fell in a moment of weakness. You see, child of God, here's the thought this morning. You and I have this weakness, and it's in all of us. And we're to be in full guard at all times. All the devil needs is one paw. All the devil needs is one paw on that weakness. And I'll tell you, he'll bring you down. He'll bring you down. There's a weakness in all of us. But here's the problem. We all would acknowledge that weakness, but the problem is we don't like to admit it. And do you see when you ignore that weakness, you're opening the door for sin to come in. You're opening the door for the devil to take you. If you ignore your weakness this morning, you're leaving yourself wide open for the devil. Watch. Watch. But he says, watch and pray. That says, child of God, we need to be in constant communion with God in prayer. Flesh is the strong weakness in all of us. We can't defeat it, child of God. Watch. That's our discipline of guard. Pray. That's our dependence upon God. It goes hand in hand. Watch and pray are the best soldiers you want on guard duty concerning your defense against the devil. The command that is expressed. But look closely into that text because there is a climate that there is expected. He says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. That's why we're to watch and pray, child of God. That ye enter not into temptation. That the weakness of the flesh doesn't give way to the devil. Norman Crawford was one of the best pike fishermen in our part of the country. He caught pike no matter where he went. And I remember him taking us out to the white locket one day and he showed us how to catch pike. And he says, you always cast, he always says, fish in a day. He says, why fish in a day? And he explained it. He says, you start off there at the edge of the reeds, cast in four times there, go out about three foot, cast in, sorry, four times, go right round four times until you finish there. And if you don't catch a pike, there's no pike in that area. He says, Norman, what are you talking about? He says, it's easy. The first time the bait goes in, if there's a pike lying there, the first, in among the weeds, the first time you cast it, that gets the pike's attention. The second time you cast in there, that gets the pike's attraction. The third time you cast it in, it gets the pike's appeal. It gets really appealing. And on the fourth, on the fourth cast, it'll follow it and attack it. Every time, you'll get it on the fourth or the fifth cast if there's one there. He says to me, do you know why the pike's easy caught? Because its weakness is in its curiosity. It cannot leave anything alone if it's constantly going past. And child of God, how it is the same with you and me. 
Listen, temptations are not threatening. They're appealing. Temptations are attractive this morning. They're attractive to me anyway, put it like that. And child of God this morning, because of the strong weakness that lies within you and lies within all of us, I can tell you now, the devil knows what bait to use, child of God, to take ye. That's why, child of God, we need our eyes and our vision well sharpened by the Word of God because do you mean the time when the Lord Jesus hungered? The Lord Jesus suffered from the old feelings of the flesh as well. He was tempted in all points as we are, but yet without sin. And you remember the devil came at that weak moment. You're hungering. If you say you're the Son of God now, if you say who you are, you turn these you turn these stones into bread. But the Lord Jesus, he was watching, you know. And he was able to tell the devil, yes, I know I can do it. And I know I'm hungered, but the word of God tells me we're not to live on bread alone. You see, that's watching and praying that ye enter not into temptation. I wonder this morning, child of God, is there some of you and you've been lured by the devil at the minute? The devil is luring you with someone. Come on, come on. And you're beginning to think to yourself at this present time, whatever it may be, I'll get off with it. Christians can be tempted in doing terrible things and don't ever limit yourself and say it couldn't happen to me. Christians can be tempted with 101 things. Maybe you can fiddle money a wee bit. I'd be better off if I fiddle it this way. And it looks tempting, and don't tell me it doesn't look tempting. Maybe it's to do with your work, dear. And you're being tempted this morning to do something, and you know it's not right. How many times has men fell? How many times has women fell over the lusts of the flesh? The devil doesn't have to drag me and he doesn't have to drag you by the nose to make you sin. Man, he lures you. Come on, he'll wind you in. You watch and pray that you enter not into temptation because I can tell you many Christians have took his bait hook, line, and sinker. Listen to what James says. Now, this is James. But every man is tempted, what? When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it comes forth, bringeth forth death. You know, we preach that oftentimes in the gospel, but I believe it's for the Christian as well. Many a good man or good woman of God were enticed and led. And that lust conceived and that conception brought forth sin and sin brought forth death. It brought death to a fruitful ministry. It brought, fruit, it brought death to a clear testimony. And it all happened in a moment of weakness. And let him that thinketh he fall, and let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. This is a message the Lord has given to me this morning. And maybe there's someone here this morning and listen. 
you can feel the pull and powers of the devil. His paw has reached you in a moment of weakness. It can happen to the best of us. In the Savior's name, get out of it now while you can. Cut the line. There's the command that is expressed. There's the climate that is expected and finished. With the condition that is explained. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is the weakness in all of us. That explains it, doesn't it? Boys, the Spirit is willing. Man, we all want to be the people God wants us to be, but the flesh doesn't let us. The Lord Jesus comes over there in verse 40. He cometh to them and he findeth them asleep. But you notice in verse 40, take a wee look at it there, he doesn't talk to the three of them, he talks to Peter. Did you notice that? He's listening to Peter, talking to Peter. Peter. You're the boy that was bumming and blowing half an hour ago or an hour ago that you're prepared to go here and you're prepared to do this and do the other thing for me. And here you are, Peter. You can't fight the weakness in your eyelids. Not even in your eyelids. And I'm not going to condemn Peter, and I'll tell you the reason why I'm not going to condemn Peter, because of the truth be told, we're all better at the sleeping than we are at the praying. We're all better at the sleeping than we are at the praying. And what I see in Peter and our two boys' eyes, boys, I'll tell you, I have nothing to crow about because I see a lot of George McConnell there. The flesh is the strong weakness in all of us. And listen, child of God, you and I are only as strong as our moment of weakness. And that's it. You and I are only strong as our moment of weakness. And we all suffer the owl pangs of the flesh, no matter how spiritual we are. And I want to say this lovingly. In fact, it's the Lord. It's not me. It's just the Lord. Is there somebody this morning in your yard tempted? Nobody else knows about it, and I'll tell you, nobody else needs to know about it. But the Lord knows about it. And you know what's wrong. You know what is. And God, through this message this morning, is saying to you, start watching and start praying. Because you are entering into temptation. And the flesh is weak. I'll tell you, get out of the trap and get away from the trap before it springs on you. You see, when the trap springs on you, it's too late. The harm's done. Paul writes in Galatians 5 and 16, and here's the key. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. That is walking in accordance to the Word of God. And ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Walk in the 
Watch and pray, child of God. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing. But you remember this. The flesh is weak in all of us. Watch. Watch and pray. May God bless his word to every heart this morning. Our closing hymn.